I welcome you all to my YouTube channel Solve with Shubham your maths partner for various competitive exam In my last class we have learnt a new concept called stocks and shares under the main topic profit and loss In this class we'll be going through few practice questions based on the concept of stocks and shares and we'll understand how to deal with these questions when asked in various competitive exam if you haven't subscribed my channel do subscribe it and go through my other classes as well till now i've covered the topics like number system simple equations special equations ratio proportion and variation percentages profit and loss So in this class we'll be looking at few very interesting questions based on the concept stocks and shares. Now the first question was asked in SSC 2002. It goes like a person wants to invest rupees 1 lakh 40000 in two types of bonds. The annual return is 12% on bond A and 16% on bond B. One of the conditions requires that the investment in bond b cannot be more than 40% of the investment in bond a what is the maximum return he can get per year you have been given four options now looking at the question you can see that bond b is giving you more return so when you want to get more return inevitably you will have to put more money into bond b Now the question is giving you a condition which states that there is a certain amount of investment which you can do in bond B it cannot exceed a certain limit so we have to make sure of that limit and then we have to find out the maximum return that the person can get per year so total investment is 1 lakh 40000 two bonds are there bond A and bond B return is 12% and 16% respectively now let us see how we can solve the question so you have bond a and you have bond b the annual return is 12 percent here the annual return is 16 percent here total amount investment is 1 lakh 40 thousand so if you are investing let's say rupees x here that here the investment would become 1 lakh 40 thousand minus x now going back to the question it clearly says investment in bond b cannot be more than 40% of the investment in bond a so we will be making use of this information so what does it mean investment in bond b 1 lakh 40000 it cannot be more than 40% of investment in bond A now let us try solving it so you would get 1.4x greater than equal to 1,40,000x greater than equal to 1 lakh now going back to the question what is the maximum return he can get per year if you look at the question bond b is giving you more returns it means that the person should invest more in bond b but then we have a limit it states x greater than equal to 1 lakh so when you have to maximize bond b you will have to minimize bond a so what does it mean it means a minimum will be 1 lakh so this would be 
in bond B one lakh forty thousand minus one lakh forty thousand. It means in bond B maximum that person can invest is only forty thousand. So remaining one lakh is invested in bond A. So you need to find out the return. It's a very simple concept of profit and loss. So in bond A you have invested one lakh. Your return is twelve percent. So how much will you will you get? Twelve percent of one lakh would be twelve thousand. In bond B you have invested forty thousand. Your return is sixty percent. So how much will you get? Sixteen percent of forty thousand would be sixty four hundred. So your total return would be twelve thousand plus sixty four hundred. That would come as eighteen thousand four hundred. Very simple concept. So here only the type like bond or investment, the words are used. But otherwise, it is a simple concept of percentages. So your answer would be option number C, eighteen thousand four hundred. We are getting the answer as eighteen thousand four hundred. Next question. A person invest a certain sum in a five percent stock at rupees two hundred, and twice the sum in a four percent stock at one sixty. Had he invested the entire sum in a eight percent stock at two forty, his income would have been rupees hundred more. How much did he invest in the four percent stock? You have been given four options. Now here. When you look at the question, you should be very clear with the terminologies. As in, what do you mean by five percent stock at rupees two hundred? We have seen this in the previous class as well. So this five percent will denote your dividend. Two hundred will denote your market value of the share. When the face value is not given, it is taken as rupees ten or hundred as. You look at your market value and then decide if it is ten or hundred. So here the face value would be hundred, and your dividend is always calculated on the face value. So when you say five percent, it means the dividend would be five rupees, five percent of hundred. So look at the question. First statement: He is investing in two parts, one sum. In one part and the another sum in another part. Five percent stock at two hundred, twice the sum in four percent stock at one sixty. So first, let us have a look at the first statement and we'll try to decode that. So you have investment one, you have investment two. Investment one is. Five percent stock at two hundred. Investment two is four percent stock at one hundred sixty. You are investing. Assume rupees X here. Here you are investing twice the amount, so two X. Now, look at the first investment. You are buying one share for two hundred rupees. You are getting dividend five rupees, five percent on your face value. Face value would be hundred rupees. So investing x rupees, what will be your income? Five by two hundred into x, five x by two hundred. Here you are buying one share for one sixty. You are getting four rupees, four percent of hundred. So you are investing two x. What will be your income? Four by one sixty into two x. So your total income would be five x by two hundred plus eight x by one sixty. This is your total income. Five x by two hundred. Plus eight x by one sixty, x by forty plus x by twenty. So this would come as three x by forty. Now 
have a look at the second statement. Had he invested the entire sum, which would be x plus 2x, 3x, in a 8% stock at 240, his income would have been 100 more. So, second case. 3x at 8% stock at 240. Correct? Correct. So what does it mean? It clearly means when you are buying a share for 240 rupees, you are getting 8 rupees. So when you are investing 3x, your income would be this. So your income is clearly coming as x by 10. What is the question tells you? It tells you in this case your income is 100 more. So initially your income was 3x by 40. So it means your x by 10 is 100 more than 3x by 40. One equation, one unknown. Let us try solving it. So you would get it as x by 10 minus 3x by 40 is equal to 100 x by 40 is equal to 100 x is equal to 4000 what is your question how much did he invest in the 4% stock so in the 4% stock he has invested 2x x is coming as 4000 so 2x would come as 8000 so your answer would be option number C because we are looking at 2x value. So our answer would be option number C. Simple question, we just have to understand the terminologies in detail and then we will get the answer. So it's just simple equations and unknown. Next question. A man invests a certain sum in 10% stock at 95 and receives an income of rupees 1000. What could be his investment? Simple question. Question says 10% stock at 95. So, ten percent stock at ninety five. Market value is ninety five. Face value would be hundred. Dividend percentage would be ten percent. So, when you are buying a share for ninety five rupees, you are getting ten rupees. Ten percent of hundred. Your income when you are investing x rupees this will be your income how much is your income 1000 rupees so your x would be 95 you will take this 9500 so our answer would be option number b the investment is supposed to be 9500 next question a man bought 30 shares of rupees 50 at rupees 10 discount the rate of dividend being 20 percent the rate of interest obtained is so look at the question number of shares is given face value is given rupees 50 10 rupees is discount so market value is given so here number of shares is given face value is given Discount is given. So, 30, 50, 10. 30, 50, 10. Which means your market value would be 50 minus 10, 40. You have to find out rate of interest. So, you need to find out rate of interest. It means when... Rate of interest is nothing but your rate of return. This is how you have to get your answer. So here, let us have a look. In this case, when your rate of dividend percentage 
is nothing but 20 percent. So, how do you get this, this one? This is your dividend with respect to your face value in 200. Here specifically the face value is given as 50 rupees. So, you would get dividend as 10 rupees. Now, you need to find out your rate of interest or rate of return. Rate of interest will be your dividend with respect to your market value in 200. Your dividend is coming as 10 rupees. Your market value is 40 rupees into 100. So, you get it as 25 percent. So, your answer would be option number C, 25 percent. Next question. A man invests some money in 5% stock at 60 and partly in 7% stock at 70. To obtain equal income from both, he should invest money in the ratio of, again a simple question, there are two investment, one is 5% stock at 60, second is 7% stock at 70. So, investment 1, investment 2. 5% stock at 60, here it says 7% stock at 70, 7% stock at 70. Let us say investment is X and Y respectively. So, when you invest 60 rupees, you get 5 rupees as a dividend. When you invest X rupees, 5x by 60. Similarly, 70 rupees, 7 as your dividend. y rupees, 7y by 70. Both the incomes should be equal. So, 5x by 60, 5x by 60 should be equal to 7y by 70. x by 12, y by 10, x by y, 12 by 10, 6 is to 5. So, your answer would be option number. To obtain equal income, you should invest money in the ratio of x is to y, which is coming as 6 is to 5. Option number B. Simple question. You just have to understand the terminologies as to what 5% means, what is your market value, how are you going to deduce your dividend percentage and then you will get your answer. So, if you have any queries, you can reach out to me at my email, at my Facebook page, my Instagram and at my blog. Do subscribe my channel Solve with Shubham and go through the other classes and ace well for your competitive exams. Stay tuned for further classes. Thank you.